Recently, I cleaned my carpet using the dry micro sponge method, which you can see in the video in the first link in the description. This involves massaging a high concentration of dust-like particles deep into the pile. This represents a very heavy dust loading that's completely unrepresentative of normal soiling concentrations, especially at these lower depths in my very deep pile carpet. In a situation like this, it takes time to remove it all completely, even with the best vacuum in the world, as I've explained in one of the most informative videos on this channel in the second link in the description, which I strongly encourage you to watch before proceeding to help set the scene for this video. To help show what I say in that video is true, I decided to take this opportunity to show a full set of measurements confirming that particle removal from complex fibre networks is a statistical process. Every vacuum always leaves some amount of the original dust behind in the carpet. Repeated passes extract a bit more of what's left each time, and the residual amount removed gradually decreases. Failure to understand this is the reason why there's so much confusion and misunderstanding in many amateur videos on YouTube. Two chestnut examples of such misunderstanding are firstly, when people wrongly conclude a vacuum isn't very good because a second vacuum cleaner later found something left behind. And secondly, when someone tries to suggest one vacuum is worse than another at deep cleaning because it removed less of an exaggerated pile of sand, not dust, from deep in the carpet after just a single pass when concentration is high. What none of these videos ever do, and which I've done here for the first time on YouTube, is show how much dust the same vacuum leaves behind each time and quantify how that residual amount changes. I measured the mass of dried micro sponge dust that was extracted after the first pass over the carpet area. I only used mode 1 on the V10 for this test, for reasons discussed later. As you can see, there was a lot of material and I did in fact overfill the bin. This was deliberate and will form part of a different video in the future. I couldn't suck it all up into the bin again and so filled the bowl in stages. The weight of the empty bowl was 770 grams, which increased to 931 grams with the dust, meaning the weight of the dust collected in the first pass was 161 grams. This is of course most of the dust, but what was left behind? If you look carefully deep down in the pile, you can still see that particles are interlocked between fibres. They're far too small and light to be vibrated, unlike say sand or salt, and so an excessive brush bar will have no effect. Even ultra strong suction won't remove them easily, because they're physically trapped there. The only way to release them into the airflow is with mechanical agitation, i.e. pile separation. This is discussed in detail in a nice video in the third link in the description, which I'd strongly recommend you watch to learn how vacuums deep clean. I revacuum the whole area again using only mode 1 and managed to extract 10 grams. This is the point where people who don't understand the statistical nature of particle removal from carpets claim that the second vacuum is better than the first because look what the first left behind. Except they're both the same vacuum here, which shows just how misunderstood the claim is. Then I revacuumed again a second time and extracted a further 6 grams. The residual amount is getting less now, but there is always something left behind from a mess that was initially so artificially severe and unrealistically deep. I revacuumed a total of 10 times and measured the mass of residual microsponge dust extracted each time. I plotted the residual masses as a function of the number of vacuum sessions, as you can see here. Exactly as I stated in the video in the second link in the description, you exponentiate high concentrations of dust in the carpet down with each pass of the vacuum and this applies to every vacuum. Using least squares regression, fitting a curve to this data shows classic first order rate system behavior that is described perfectly by an exponential, just like a half-life. The equation is shown, and this applies to the particular surface area vacuumed of my particular carpet, 
for my particular vacuum cleaner only. Poorer vacuums would have lower exponential prefactors and exponents in the equation. The weighing scales I used are only accurate to the nearest gram, so the vertical error bars show the uncertainty in weight measurement for completeness. What's important to take away from this, other than this fully supports everything I said in my earlier video, is that individual particles are removed stochastically. All vacuums always leave something behind, particularly at depth, and this gets less and less each time you vacuum. The reason why I keep extracting dust isn't because the vacuum cleaner isn't very good, but because in this case, the carpet was deliberately excessively dust loaded, far more severely than would ever be encountered in normal, real world living with regular housekeeping. This result trend will be seen with any vacuum cleaner because this is the nature of the physical carpet system. When my particular carpet gets dusty from real world use during the week, and doesn't have lots of dirt artificially injected deep into the base of the pile, this behaviour isn't seen as severely, and going over a second or third time finds very little residual, even in high power mode. In other words, realistic concentrations are lower and nearer the tail end where it's harder to perform well. This supports another point that is widely misunderstood I made in the video in the fourth description link discussing how to deep clean carpets. In normal living, dust is delivered to the top of the pile, such that with regular and responsible housekeeping, never makes it to the base of a deeper pile carpet, because pile is dense and acts like a blocking filter for dust, which remains near the surface region. So, the bedroom user tests on YouTube, which artificially put particles deep into pile, are not reflecting real world usage and are thus misleading, as the video discusses. Plus, it's harder to remove very low real-world concentrations of dust, and only the best vacuums reach the lowest minimum. After 10 cleans in low power mode, I decided to go over the floor area again using max mode. I managed to extract just 4 grams of residual dust, which is a bit more than was being left behind in mode 1, as you'd expect, but a lot less than was being removed in mode 1 in the first few passes when more dirt was available and it was easy to get. While mode 1 with lower suction would get everything out eventually, high suction machines that can maintain airflow through the separated pile simply reduce residual concentrations faster, as described in the video with the third link in the description. This doesn't mean they deep clean better and reach lower concentrations, they just deep clean faster, and that's only relevant for severe messes such as a spot mess like a knocked over plant pot, or these artificially exaggerated situations. This is another point that's badly understood. To show this very point, I re-vacuumed the carpet again after max mode, but back in mode 1. I managed to extract another 2 grams of dust, showing once and for all that even a more powerful vacuum, or more powerful vacuum mode in this case, still leaves dust behind, again because removal is stochastic and described statistically. That higher power, suction and airflow didn't remove everything, it just removes proportionally more per pass. And as the video in the third link in the description explains, this is only true for good cleaner head design. There are many factors relevant to the cleaning performance beyond motor power, suction and hose airflow, and brute force machines with lots of airflow at the hose, can fail badly at the carpet if the cleaner head design doesn't optimise those other factors for particle extraction. Taking another look deep down in the pile after all these cleaning sessions, you can see that there's very little left. Any straggling bits left will all come out eventually. But look at how the concentration at the very base has decreased hugely. This proves once and for all Despite the propaganda and false claims, the V10, the first cordless to replace a mains upright, absolutely does deep clean right to the backing material, even on my very deep pile carpet in mode 1. The really important takeaway messages in this video are that vacuuming particles out of a carpet is a stochastic process. 
Most dust accumulates at the top of the carpet in real-world conditions and is hard to get to the base of deeper piles. Higher suction cleans faster, not better, and only good cleaner head design can reduce dust concentrations to the lowest levels. Low suction will deep clean just as well if the cleaner head separates the pile to allow airflow deep down. And finally, the V10 really does deep clean even deep pile carpets and is a genuine mains vacuum replacement. Thanks for watching.